What's up guys, Jason back again with another nutritional tip. Gonna keep this one short and sweet. We're talking about priorities on a budget when it comes to nutrition and supplementation. So first off, for feeding yourself, $50 a week can go a long way when you're shopping at a market somewhere like Trader Joe's or Sprouts and you can stock up on food. And I wanna show you how to take care of those fundamentals and if you have closer to $100 per week or you have disposable income, we'll put it into different categories, where you would prioritize different foods based on convenience, saving you time. And then also we're gonna to touch on supplementation, covering the necessities, and where you can pay a little bit extra to get that extra one, two percent. But understand that a lot of people are seeking that magic bullet, and I wish it existed, but in reality, when you embrace the process and have fun taking care of the fundamentals with your nutrition, it all becomes easier and enjoyable and you get the results you want. So first off, stocking up on meat as long as every week you have some protein sources of you know, ground beef, ground chicken, chicken thighs have a lot of flavor. You can make you know, one pound of meat turn into four 25 gram protein servings you're eating about a pound of meat or so is gonna provide you with about 100 grams of proteins per day for a single person. So stocking up on the ground beef, chicken, eggs, easy protein sources that go a long way, and then little single serving protein packs like chicken and tuna. Trader Joe's makes this wild salmon that gives you over 30 grams of protein with very low fat. And then from your carbs, we got sweet potatoes, you got bananas that are great when you are you know, under higher intensity exercise or you're lean, depending on what your goals are. Wild blueberries you can mix into smoothies or eat. Uh, carrots, you know, oats that you can mix for overnight oats. You can do pancakes, all kinds of fun things. And then avocados, great source of fat. So again, this is a, a kind of a foundational base of foods that should be your higher priority. And then you can add in all the fancy stuff and the sweeteners and all that stuff if you have extra money. Uh, when it comes to sweeteners, to save money, pick a couple go-to seasonings like coconut aminos you can get from Trader Joe's or Sprouts or wherever, a good sea salt and a nice seasoning blend that you like, so maybe something spicy. That's an easy way to make all this food more enjoyable. Remember, every time you're cooking, cook extra so you have easy sides. This saves you so much money. The average meal when you're eating out is closer to 10 bucks, sometimes more depending on where you're at. You can cut that down to $5 or less per meal just based on having your own supplies. All right guys, so if you have a little bit extra to spend, you're paying for convenience, saving your time, and a little bit more enjoyableness. If you're not eating out as much, this is easy to justify, but in that case, you know, you can buy things that are easy carb portions like rice that's already cooked. Um, get your probiotics and cultured veggies, which is a great condiment like kimchi or sauerkraut helps support your digestive health. And you can also use some of that money to buy prepared meals. And maybe this is a good investment to be able to build some consistency, but these average meals are gonna be closer to 10 or $11 compared to the meals that you can make for $5. Powdered peanut butter, um, you know, better quality fish, and like pre-chopped vegetables, which these are still pretty cheap and you can get them, you know, for your fundamentals. So look for frozen vegetables and Trader Joe's has, you know, a lot of chopped vegetables that make it easy to create your own salad bar and meal prep. This stuff saves you money, saves you stress, and makes it easy to put your meal plan together with a nutrition plan that will fuel your goals. Next up, these are the things that you wanna cover your deficiencies, you have a little bit extra to spend to get that extra you know, 1%, sometimes up to 5%. But a good protein powder is something to help you meet your protein goals, but also you can use it as a flour alternative or functional ingredient to make things like protein pancakes and protein cookies and all that fun stuff. Uh, creatine, you know, so if your goals are performance and pushing yourself, there's also you know, studies that show that it helps with cognitive function, uh, sleep deprivation. This is something that you can build your own pre-workout and save yourself some money. 
Um, and again, you're having something like that post-workout if you're creating that demand. Covering the deficiencies, you know, omega-3s, now you can eat wild fish, get hemp seed, flax seed, things like that to get your omegas in, which are good for brain development, inflammation, cardiovascular health. But if not, buy one. Um, it's a good value to cover yourself. Uh, vitamin D, we're very deficient in it. And again, look for your individual deficiencies. It could be magnesium, different B vitamins, but covering these are a high priority. The more of the luxuries, Things like amino acids, these are not necessary if you're eating enough protein. You can save money by eating eggs or even whey protein or plant protein, whatever you want. But if you are under low on your, your calories at a caloric deficit, this can kind of work as insurance so that you're not losing a lot of muscle and that will help support your metabolism and your goals in the long run. The amino acids help convert to glycogen which you can tap into for energy when you don't have a lot of food or energy to tap into in your training frequently. And then things like joint formulas to take care of inflammation and so on. A lot of this can be done by monitoring your diet, getting good sleep, and managing your stress. Hope that was helpful. Shoot any sort of questions you have, happy to start a conversation and provide some resources. Thanks for watching.